In this post, I unbox this miniatures game called Oak and Iron. We will open up the box, look at the parts, build the ships, and look at the components on the tabletop. Oh, I also have some scale comparison footage to give you an idea of the size of these ships. Firelock Games describes the game as follows. Oak and Iron is a 1 600th scale naval game set in the age of piracy, imperial expansion, and above all, fighting sail. It allows players to recreate battles between small fleets and squadrons of armed sailing ships. The game is designed to be simple and intuitive while also challenging players by providing significant tactical depth, being true to the theme and tactics of the period, and supplying significant flavor for the various factions represented in the game. As you can see, this game looks very visually appealing. Before getting further into this video, let me tell you about myself. My name is Jay, and you're watching Must Contain Minis. I do reviews and showcases of miniatures and miniature related products. Generally, I focus on products made by companies outside of the biggest on the market. My goal is to open up the minds of miniature wargamers to the other options that may be available. I would like to send a thank you out to Firelock Games for sending me this copy of Oak and Iron for review. I would also like to state that there are links in the description below that earn me a small percentage of your purchase price at no extra charge to you. Those links are denoted with the word affiliate to keep you informed in case you want to do some shopping from here. Now let's open up that box. Right on the top we have a copy of the rule. This post is about what is in the box, so we will do a quick flip through of the rules without really getting into them. If you want to check out the rules, you can pause the video as I flip. Or better yet, when you're done watching this video, you can use a link in the description below to head over to Firelock Games and download a copy of the rules for yourself. Right now those rules are available for free. That would be the best way for you to figure out if the rules of this game are something that appeal to you. We then have a promotional card to buy some gaming mats. Looks like this Cuban has expired by now, but that is okay. This is an older box, so I wonder if the newer boxes will have an updated coupon in them. Carrying on, we have tokens and punch out terrain. There's a good amount in there. What are these? Nice. They have some flags with the different nations on them too. That is handy. Next up, we have a paper gaming mat. It's a little glossy, but it's good quality poster paper for sure. Under that we have the sliders, some bases, and dice. Here are our cards. They're nicely wrapped up. Interesting how they come in different sizes. Here we have the ships. Some of them are pretty big. Later on I'll do a skill comparison. If you want to jump around the video, there are chapter links in the description below that you can use to jump around. Otherwise, keep watching. Now let's clear some room and build the ships. I'm not really going to use any glue for this. I'm interested in what they look like right out of the box with no glue or anything. These sails just press right in. There we are. That's a nice looking ship. Now another. Okay, this one didn't go together as nicely as I wanted. The plug doesn't fit into the ship. Time to carry on to the next one. This one's going together much easier. Oh, the sail doesn't fit the way I want it to, to fit in. I might have to glue that one down later. This one is going together very nicely. Looks pretty good too. Now this one I thought would be easier to build, but these two little holes make it more difficult to build. It is a little hard to get those sails in there with my hands. You know what? That's good enough. I'm giving up. If you want these sails to look bright on the ship, you'll probably need to use some glue. Remember that second ship that I had issues with? Well I took a knife to the plug and I trimmed it down a bit so the plastic would fit better into the socket. Perfect, now it fits nice. To build these ships I use no glue. This is how they look straight out of the box. Sure, they go together without glue, but you may end up wanting to use glue for a couple of them. Let's toss them down on the gaming mat and take a look at them. Generally I prefer fabric or neoprene gaming mats, but it is nice that they gave us something in the box to help our game look good straight out of the package. What ships do you get? You get a sloop, a brigantine, a corvette, a petite frigate, a flute, and a galleon. That gives you six ships right out of the core box. You can buy more through various expansions. 
The scope of this video is just the core box, so let's take a closer look at the ships in this box. You get the sloop, the brigantine, the light frigate, the flute, the corvette, and the galleon. While we're here, we might as well do some scale comparisons. Check this out. Here we have a scale comparison between the Oak and Iron ships, a Primera Space Marine, and a 28mm bolt action miniature. Some of these ships are very sizable. These aren't even the biggest ships that you can buy for the game. There are bigger ones out there. I really wonder how the large ships of the line miniatures are in their size. I might have to get my hands on one of those boxes just to find out for myself. The first rate ships are currently the largest available for the game. Again, Oak and Iron is a 1 600th in scale game. Right out of the box, these ships look great. There's not too much construction to worry about here. You just push those sails into the ships and you're good to go. With the colors that Firelock Games chose to use with the plastics, you don't even need to paint them up unless you want to. Um, if you do want to paint them up, Firelock Games does have a painting guide that I will link in the description below. Here's a shot of everything from the box all laid out on the tabletop. That's a good amount of stuff and Firelock Games clearly went through a lot of effort to make this game look very appealing straight out of the box. In the interest of seeing what the game looks like on the tabletop, I took the contents of the box set and staged a few photographs to see how they would look in play. Now let's take a look at some of those photos. Compared to some other naval games out there, this one would hit the table much faster from the box to the initial game, simply because you don't have to spend much time building them. Now let's flip through the cards for a bit. First up we have the event cards. These are all things that can affect the game. Here we have a few different types of cards. Let's take a look through them and see if there's anything interesting in there. Right now I'm not worried about the rules, but rather the quality of the components. These cards are pretty nice. Next up we have the ship cards. I like these even more than the other cards. On the opposite side, you will find the description for the special rules. And here we have some clips. Wait a second, this is cool. These clips go on these cards. Oak and Iron has some pretty nice components in there and everything feels like quality and they definitely took some time to make them look good. With miniature type games packaged up like board games, I always wonder, will they go back in the box? Right now I'm testing that out. The ships fit in there along with the cards and everything else. It's nice that they have compartments for everything. The punch out terrain and tokens are always a concern when I have a game like this. I find that sometimes after you get them out of the punch sheets, they don't always go back in as nicely as when they came out. Thank you for watching this unboxing of Oak and Iron with me. Again, in this video we are looking at only the quality of the components. These contents look pretty good to me. Like Blood and Plunder, this is a very visually appealing game. And unlike Blood and Plunder, if you don't even want to paint up the miniatures, you can honestly get away with using just the brown hulls and the white sails. These ships are scaled to 1 600th in size and are available at a number of retailers and on the Firelock Games website too. If you want to learn more about the game, there's going to be links below for you to find more resources. Firelock Games has the rules available for free right now on their website along with videos on how to play and even a force builder site too. I will also link to my site must contain minis to give you some more oak and iron content. One of those articles has a scale comparison image of the concept art to a 28-32mm miniature from Blood and Plunder. This includes a look at the size of the first rate ship that I mentioned earlier. Links to all of those resources will be in the description below. On top of that, I also have affiliate links in there. 
If you use those links, I get a portion of the purchase price at no extra cost to you. They will be marked as affiliate links in the interest of full disclosure. Thank you again for watching this video. If you like what you saw, please watch some more videos and check out my website too. You can find it at mustcontainminis.com. Until next time, happy gaming everyone!